Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Speed Street, the very fast road, uh, a great community, Speed Street podcast. Uh, I am here, uh, Connor Daly, if you don't know who I am. Uh, I, I enjoy this show. I like to talk about motorsport. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm here with my my co-host, Chase, Chase Holden. Uh, he's a great man, great American man. Uh, if you don't know us, welcome. Uh, but you probably do if you're listening to the show. But if you're a first timer, welcome. Hey, we appreciate you. Welcome to the mm-hmm. program. Welcome to the future of motorsport podcasts. I don't know. Let's just hope that that's, uh, mm-hmm. that's a great thing. Um, very, very exciting week. It's race week. IndyCar race week. Finally, it's our turn to get into the octagon. Uh, Formula One has started. That was not even worth talking about. Uh, NASCAR is already going. Uh, but IndyCar, it's time to shine. We've got a lot of exciting things happening. We finally also have a full roster of drivers. We had three, four driver announcements today, essentially. Three different drivers for the Dale Coyne Racing Team. And Callum Eilat replacing uh, the injured David Malukas. Uh, So, Chase, how are you feeling? Are we excited? You know the vibes down in St. Pete are high. Everyone's excited. Uh, it's, It's IndyCar Race Week. Yeah, no, I'm just really excited to have some open wheel thrills, some real there open wheel thrills that don't come with a uh, million mile gaps. Um, <laughs> it's going to be very fun. Uh, St. Pete is a great place, by the way. I went for my first time in 2023. Uh, Marcus Erickson took the win there you uh, go. at that race. It was it was exhilarating. We had you know good friends, good times. I sat on the back of a wooden deck by water, watched on television, drank uh, some ice cold water. It was hot. Uh, yes. Wore a button down that day. Uh, I think by the end of the day, I started with all buttons. At the end of the day, completely unbuttoned. Chest hair was just out. Freedom. And Freedom. It was that. That's a great word for that race, by the way. That that is like it, that Florida freedom. Freedom. That's what you yep. get there. And in the scene, dude, and like last year for it being my first race, too. And I know that you were out there running. I got to come see you uh, before the race. And then when the race started, I know there was that that huge wreck. And I know that oh, yeah. you unfortunately uh, kind of around, you know, you, I think you died. Did you? You I had a dodge. Move. Yeah, big dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge moment. Yeah. I love that, dude. Like, Rip Torn was proud of you, dude. Rip Torn <laughs> was very proud. Shout out to the movie Dodgeball. It's a great yep. film. Um, so, yeah, you watch that. Um, and and then from there, just, just getting to really experience an opening season race, there's nothing quite like it. I know there's people from all over the world that are coming here. There was someone on X the other night that's flying in from Japan that love is coming that. to that race. So, um, yeah, it couldn't be a more exciting weekend. I hate that I'm not going to be there. It will be my birthday. Uh, That's all right. So we'll you be celebrate. celebrating. Uh, I wanted to celebrate there, but you know what? We're, we're going to make it out to one of these races soon. I got a couple on the bucket list, but I will definitely be watching and tuned in. I'm excited. My heart's pumping. I'll put I love it that. that. I love that. Yeah, we've got a, a lot to talk about today. We also have a great interview with uh, Mr. NBC himself, uh, Lee Diffie. Lee Diffie's with us. Um, A conversation that I think you will very much enjoy uh, about the upcoming IndyCar season, uh, the Indy 500, everything that's exciting about that, and uh, a little bit of Olympic chatter. Uh, Big year for the Olympics. I mean, hey, very excited. I absolutely love watching the Olympics. And uh, and so Lee tells us a little bit about what it's like to, uh, you know, call the Olympic events as well. Racing on feet. Exactly. Just a bunch of people running around. You know what I mean? Athletes that are more athletic than I. Uh, very, very excited about that. Um, but there's a lot of news to get to. Th- there will be no other chatter about any other form of motor racing this weekend. We, 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 it's, we, it's full IndyCar dedication. We even have some exciting news with IndyCar. We're, we're a little bit of a partnership that's looking like it's you know now a real thing. It's looking like we're going to get to interview the winners of, of every IndyCar race this year. That's uh, that's what I've been told. That's some interactings that we've got going on between Dirty Mo Media and IndyCar. We love this. Go. It's very, go. very exciting. That means next week you can be like, oh, my gosh, who's going to be the guest? Whoever was holding the trophy. So uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I hope we get a different winner every single race because that means we'll have quite a diverse uh, list of guests. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to see some, challenges. Some, some dominance this year out of a couple different people. But uh, great guest. But let's get right into it because we have been waiting on this news. We've been waiting on this news. I mean, this is – everyone started joking about it. I even put out a tweet last night 
on the, the X platform, I, I said, um, it's time. I really hope that the Dale Coin Racing team announces their drivers just in time for us to record this show. And thank you to the motor racing gods. Thank you to Dale Coin Racing. Thank you to Arrow McLaren for making your announcements on Tuesday morning. I respect the heck out of that. We got a fine announcement from Dale Coin Racing. Now, there's been some... I put out a tweet saying Buddy Rice and Mario Dominguez would be the drivers. Now, that was obviously sarcastic. One person legitimately took me serious, which I find oh. that just I, – I <laughs> doubt the level of the human intelligence after that one. Um, oh. But a lot of great responses from a lot of great uh, Twitter followers I have there. Uh, TBA is finally a real group of people. So Dale Coin Racing, they announced – if you missed this, they announced – three drivers, and a veteran race engineer. They, they brought in uh, race engineer Steve Newey, who uh, I, I've known Steve since I was go-kart racing. Steve Newey, his son Brandon, raced with me in go-karts, me and Joseph Newgarden, uh, way back in the in the day. Uh, Steve Newey was a part of Dan Weldon's win in 2011 uh, at the Indy 500. Uh, so Steve Newey, very experienced, very smart guy. Uh, I'm sure that'll be a great addition uh, to, to that racing team. Um, but the drivers... Jack Harvey, Colin Braun, and Nolan Siegel. Uh, so three drivers. Now, this might be confusing. Let's let's figure out, okay, who's going to be in the car first? Jack Harvey, Colin Braun for the first two weekends. Now, Jack Harvey's program in total, I believe, is 14 races from this uh, this press release. It says, DCR has signed veteran IndyCar driver Jack, Jack Harvey to pilot its number 18 Invest entry. Now, Invest, I believe, is a group that has been helping Jack try to raise some money for these races which is very difficult. Uh, the reason why Dale is splitting all these seats up is because no one has a full budget. No one has it. I didn't have any money. Jack didn't have any. No one's got a full budget, so we're, we're just piecing things together. Um, but, the you know, Colin Braun has had some great supporters in his career. I love that Colin Braun's getting a chance. Colin Braun showing up, boom, St. Pete and, and Thermal were confirmed for him. Um, Nolan Siegel uh, will be in the car for the Indy 500. He will be in the car for the Million Dollar Challenge at, at Thermal uh, and Long Beach and Toronto. Uh, so uh, that's a pretty good schedule for a young driver. Uh, he's also focused on Indy NXT. So that, that's the first time in a long time. I believe Carlos Munoz was the last driver that we saw that was kind of doing it, dabbling in a bit of both. Uh, Carlos Munoz, we were rookies at the Indy 500 together in 2013, but he was also racing in Indy, uh, Indy Lights as well, Indy NXT. Um, so lots of races still on the Dale Coin Racing calendar because they only confirmed two races for the second car. So the 51 is essentially still a wide open, uh, wide open entry. Um, but we do have, it looks like the entire season confirmed for, uh, for the 18 car, just split between two drivers. Uh, now, for Jack, that's going to be tough to miss the Indy 500. I hate to see that for him, but he does get 14 races. So, very curious to see how this plays out. Um, uh, I, I mean, the way that this is being put together is like a Picasso painting. I'm sure there's a lot of details, and there's a lot of small things that you can pick out. You know, one thing, this is one race. Boom, here we go. There's another race. It's like a Lego. It's like a great Lego that you're trying to build. And Dale's building it with all the pieces he's got. And so we got a lot of exciting moments for a young driver. Nolan Siegel, boom, Indy 500. Here we go. Very excited. Colin Braun, first ever Indy car race. Now, Colin Braun, is, he's, he's been around a long time. Colin Braun also had some experience in NASCAR. NASCAR truck races. Uh, did he? I don't know if he raced in the Xfinity Series or not. Bobby, you would know. You're a big NASCAR historian. Do you know if Colin Braun raced in the Xfinity Series? Maybe as well. But uh, Colin Braun's been, you know, in the sports car scene for a long time, a lot of people have thought he deserved uh, a chance in the open wheel uh, ranks. Here we go. He's getting it. His throw, he's getting thrown in right at the deep end. Bobby, you have an answer there. Yeah, Colin Braun has run 31 Xfinity races with six top tens. There you go. There you go. 31 Xfinity races. So Colin Braun's now been in everything, and, and, and I respect that. Love to see it. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so basically the next thing that we will have to look forward to out of the Dale Coin Racing Camp will be who is driving the 51 uh, after Thermal. Uh, there are a lot of races ahead on that schedule. They uh, they will be, I will be very curious to see who ends up on that list. Uh, so cool. Good, good to see. Also, one other driver announcement that I think everyone knew. If you didn't know, you, well, that's all right. You were just, you, you were busy. 
Uh, but Callum Eilat is is driving uh, the uh, the David Malukas wagon uh, for the Aero McLaren team. Uh, I think Callum's going to do very well. I think he's a very good driver. He's going to be slotting right in there, uh, ready to go, ready to rip. Uh, that was always going to be McLaren's choice. Uh, I had interacted with them a little bit, but uh, but that you know, there's there's th- that that choice makes sense. So. Chase, do you know any of these people? Have you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're new to the IndyCar realm. Chase, we're getting you into it. But uh, yeah. we've got some some new names to follow uh, here in St. Petersburg. We've got Colin Braun, very exciting story, underdog story. Uh, and Jack Harvey, who needs, who, you know, he got fired from Ray Hall. Difficult position, but he's got a chance to come back now. So it, it, it's kind of, kind of exciting to watch. I'm just glad we have a full field to look at now. Yeah, no, I the, I do know Jack Harvey. Um, yes. I, I went out to the Iowa race, I think, in 2022. Um, we, were, we were doing a little bit of representing for, uh, for, for the Hy-Vee folk in, uh, in Duke Cannon. And we go. got to see Jack. And I remember they had this great marketing campaign. It was like, uh, like, like you, you don't know Jack or something like that? Or yes. Or do you know Jack <laughs> or something? Anyway, I, I got a cut off sleeve shirt of that. Uh, that was cool. I went to a hive for the first time. I interviewed people inside of a hive. Um, Jack that. wasn't there, but they had a cutout of cardboard them. cutouts. So, yeah, yeah. So that's a good one. So uh, for everyone else, though, I, I am learning. Cool, to, cool to hear that uh, that that Mr. Braun has uh, ha- has some experience in NASFINITY. That's nice. <laughs> um, but I, I will say that uh, I'm really looking forward to learning a lot more. And I, I've told Connor this is a big announcement. I have a special report um special report Uh oh special report uh this season uh i will be exclusively focusing heavily hard on indycar there will be a lot of heavy hard focus on indycar from me that's a special report from me on this show just want to let everyone know i'm ready to dive in deep we're taking indycar to the moon and uh, th- this is how we're going to do it. You know, if you're an astronaut and you're focusing on getting to space, you've got to be looking straight ahead. That's the same vibe that I'm bringing this season. So get ready. Yeah. Obviously, Chase has a lot of experience in the NASCAR realm, but Chase is an IndyCar fan. And for those people, now Chase does also sound like a NASCAR fan, but hey, that is not a problem. Mm-hmm. Why, we, we cannot, <laughs> just because he sounds like he has a NASCAR poster behind him right now, does oh, not mean photo. that he is not allowed to follow IndyCar racing. So, hey, we got to give this man a lot of credit. He's dedicating his mind, his heart, his soul, his human physical body to the IndyCar series, and we're excited about that. We're going to have a ton to cover. He's going to learn a ton this year, and also he's going to be watching every single race, locked in on all the sessions, uh, and we're mm-hmm. going to get him to a lot of races too. We're going to have him out in the month of May. We're going to get him to another Indy 500, Ooh. all kinds of stuff. So Ooh. it's going to be an exciting year. Um, I kind of wanted to go through – as as a bit of a preview, uh, we're going to go through every team here. We're going to go through. We've we've kind of just to just to make sure everyone knows who's going to be doing what, who is going to be in what car, what number are we following, and uh, and and who we think is going to do what. Um, so I'm gonna well, let's start out the 2024 uh, IndyCar season preview uh, right now with the Chip Ganassi Racing team, obviously because Chip Ganassi Racing has uh, well they have a ton of cars to talk about. Uh, and if you go to the IndyCar website, uh, you, uh, you click on the drivers tab. You, you maybe scroll down there, see all see all these folks, see all these uh, very you know very strapping young gentlemen uh, ready to go racing. Uh, and and the first driver that comes up for uh, for Chip Ganassi Racing is Marcus Armstrong, right? So we've got Marcus Armstrong, you've got Scott Dixon, uh, you've got um, so <laughs> I just almost said Marcus Erickson, uh, but that is not true. Uh, you've got Linus Lundquist. You've got uh, Kiffin Simpson. Uh, what a team. Uh, I, did I miss anyone? Oh, Alex Plo, obviously. Never mind. I, I'm an IndyCar guy, clearly. Um, so anyway, you gotta th- focus I, I, on wish you. Th- I wish IndyCar on this website had it like team by team and all the drivers. But, you know, we're, we're working on it. We're, we're workshopping mm-hmm. it. Uh, so obviously, I think Alex Plo is going to be the man to beat. Um, I think that team in general is going to be very curious to see how Kip, Kiffin Simpson does. He was faster than I think some people expected at the test. I've, obviously, if you've been listening to this show for a long time, you know how I feel about him. Um, but, hey, everyone's got a fair chance to go from zero points this weekend. Uh, Marcus Armstrong. Honestly, Marcus Armstrong for me is going to be a dark horse. Marcus Armstrong posted a video the other day on his story. I don't know if you saw this, uh, Chase, but 
He, you know how you do a plank uh, in the gym? Like you just get on your forearms and you do a plank hold. Have you mm -hmm. ever done one of those? Elbows. That was like Yeah, you get uh, on the college. elbows. Your, your legs are extended yeah. out kind of like push-up position. Mm -hmm. He did that for an hour. Oh, and wow. I think that's, I actually responded to him and said like, dude, you're actually like a psycho. This is, that shouldn't, that's, that's silly. That's why would you even want to do that? Yeah. Now, Patrick Bateman status, dude. Yeah. Like he weighs about 110 pounds. It looks like. So I'm not surprised that this is possible. I don't have the luxury of being built like a aerodynamic, like rocket ship thing that goes to space, like a tiny little missile, like one of those mm -hmm. little, like, uh, just uh, like pinpoint arrows that you shoot, uh, like those archers shoot. You know what I mean? That's Marcus yeah. Armstrong. Uh, he's a he's a pinpoint arrow shooter. Um, okay, I can't do that for more than like minutes. Minutes is is great for me. Uh, Marcus Armstrong does it for an hour. I think Marcus Armstrong, Marcus Armstrong, ten races in, he's going to be in the top eight in the championship. That's going to be my pick right there. Top eight in the championship, ten races in, uh, which is kind of an odd prediction, but I think he's going to be very very good. Um, other than that, Scott Dixon, we always know that he's going to be great. So any any reaction there to the Ganassi predictions? Any reaction to what, what you think they're going to do this week? Yeah, no, I mean, I was just still kind of like processing everything you told me about Marcus Armstrong. I think I'm going to call him <laughs> Bows and Toes, dude. I'm going to call him Bows, Bows and Toes. Bows and Toes. There Bows you go. and Toes, Marcus Armstrong. Um, yeah, I mean, all great things. I don't know much about him, but with Scott Dixon, I do know a good bit about Scott Dixon. <laughs> I do know that Scott Dixon uh, is, is a man of men. He uh, represents for the Kiwis. Um, also, you know, Scotty Mac too, but, uh, you know, Scott Dixon, I, I made a prediction last week and I'm sticking yep. to it and I'm really strong with it. And, um, and I'm going to try to make that come to fruition as much as I can by staring at a television screen every weekend. So I love we'll see that. what happens. We're going to see what happens there. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm really interested now. I can't wait to get out to a race and meet this Marcus Armstrong, bows and toes, Marcus. I <laughs> can't wait. Go. There you go. Um, so, all right. Gana uh, Ganassi. Big question again, what is moving to five cars going to do that operation? You know, is there a changing of staff? Who is new? Who is not? Um, I'm very, very curious. There, there's so much as a fan that you could be excited about here. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on to Team Penske. Hold on Team a second, Penske. Connor. As a non-Indy okay. car, as a non-Indy car yes. guy, I have a question. Is there All right, a let's go, Bobby. Producer Bobby. Producer Bobby with a question. Is there a limit in IndyCar to the amount of cars a team can run for a full-time oh. Technically, I actually don't believe that there is. I I, I don't, like, because obviously I think Andretti ran six at the Indy 500 one year. Whoa. Um, I, I don't think that there is a limit. It just, it's how many cars do you want to buy? How many, like, obviously there's no limit in Indy NXT because you've got HMD who's got like eight cars or nine cars or 10 cars. So uh, I, I think that with the charter system that they're trying to develop. Now, I, I don't know how that's going to look like. Franchises, charters, I assume there's going to be a limit because realistically, Andretti, Gamebridge, they could go in and buy all 20 charters if they wanted. But I assume there's going to be some sort of respectful limit to that. Um, so yes, I, I, there is no rules against however many cars you want to run. It just, Whoa. It's just about your sanity, I think, and, and financials. <laughs> you could, you, I mean, you could go full Monopoly board game, dude. Like, I mean, essentially, you could, you could kill it, dude. Okay, <laughs> there's that. Like, I, I kind of like that, honestly. I mean, it's just like, hey, the more the merrier. Bring it yeah. on. We'll see what happens. But exactly. yeah, gentlemen, handshakes have to happen there. Gentlemen, handshakes. Exactly. So we'll see how that obviously works out. Um, but let's move on to Team Penske. Team Penske. You know who's at Team Penske? Joseph Newgarden, everyone's favorite Greek god statue. Uh, the, the, the picture of fitness, the man on the Indy 500 ticket. Um, he is not going to be happy unless he wins and humiliates everyone else. Uh, so again, Joseph, probably going to be really good. Scott McLaughlin, probably going to be really good. Uh, Will Power, probably going to be really good. There's no one in that organization that is going to be happy finishing second. They're all going to be only happy if they win. Uh, again, hard to, hard to predict them all finishing outside the top five. Now, there has been some crazy stuff that happens there. Will Power crashed there one year and got injured, and Oriol Servia had to drive the car. That was my rookie year. I remember starting right next to Oriol Servia at the back, and he was in a Penske suit that he just got the night before. So Damn. crazy things have happened, um, but uh, Will Power is going to be great. He put out a very inspirational social video about how he's – it's time, like he was saying some creative things on the teleprompter, but it was very exciting. And, uh, and, and Team Penske, Chase, I already know you're cheering for Scott McLaughlin. That's, that's, that's going to be your guy. 
Scotty Mac, baby. Scotty Mac. That's it. <laughs> Love to see uh, it. I will say, though, I do want to bring up the fact, like you were talking about Joseph Newgarden. You know, he's not going to be happy unless he wins. I, I feel like he's so laser focused. He had to unfollow everybody on X. Like, he exactly. had to unfollow everyone so that he could just, when he got on there, he just wanted to let you know, I'm coming. And I'm so glad you brought this up. This is a side story, but in our IndyCar preview, Joseph Newgarden has unfollowed every single person on every social media app. Instagram, Twitter, unfollowed his wife. Uh, I, I don't understand report. what brings a person to do this, but I know having, talk, having talked to Joseph Newgarden, Joseph hates social media, I believe. I, I, he, he says he can't wait for a time when he can just not have a Twitter account, not have an Instagram account. He is so anti-social media. He's the most, like, doesn't want anyone to know what he's doing in his personal life type guy. And I respect that. You know, it's not for everyone. I, you got to do your thing. But Joseph Newgarden followed, unfollowed everyone. He doesn't even follow his wife. I mean, Sad. you can't even just leave it at, like, one or two. Support the family. You know what I mean? I, nope. No wife. No family. No friends. Uh, so Joseph has eliminated all the outside influences. He only gets to see pictures of himself on his feed. And maybe, I don't know what his for you page looks like now. Who knows? That thing's got it. I mean, like you just get, it's like, what do you do there? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, I, I think Joseph spends literally no time on social apps. So, um, sorry if you're trying to DM him about, you know, chicken recipes or whatever you think is, is, is new and exciting. His ab routines. He's not going to look at it. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's not gonna he got the tattoo. He got the tattoo of Ryan Brent Blaney on his leg, and then he just unfollowed everyone. It was just a sad time. <laughs> yep. So I, I actually did want to mention that on the show last week. I'm glad you brought it up this week because that's wild. Joseph Newgarden unfollowed IndyCar. Everyone's dead. That's it. No, everyone's out. Joseph Newgarden only <laughs> only focusing on a championship and winning the next yeah. 110 Indy 500s in a row. So that's it. That's his goal. And I respect that. I love Joseph. He's one of my long t longest time best friends. But uh, Joseph Newgarden no longer cares about any of what you have to say on the internet, which I mm. think is hilarious. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Let's go. Why not to the McLaren team? Let's go to the McLaren team. Uh, we've got Callum Eilat, Pato Award, and Alexander Rossi. Now, the big question here this weekend, and I've heard from a couple different people now that they are thinking McLaren is going to dominate this weekend. There is a... There is a low-key rumor that McLaren at the IndyCar test, they were running heavy fuel loads the whole time. They were not, they were not really pushing. They were just kind of saving their, saving their uh, doing a little sandbagging, uh, which I find hard to believe now in the modern IndyCar era. But maybe they are. Maybe they are so good that they are going to just smack everyone when it comes to qualifying. And I'm excited for that. If that happens, guess what? That means that every other team has to work even harder. And you know that Andretti's going to be working hard. You know that Penske's going to be working hard. You know that Ganassi's going to be working hard. So I think that early predictions, early rumors are that McLaren is going to be very good this weekend. Callum Eilat wants to go out and absolutely humiliate the Yunkos team. We obviously know that. Uh, that's a personal vendetta, I'm sure. Um, and I can't wait to see that happen. You love a bit of emotional uh, emotional zest, huh, Chase? A little bit of, mm -hmm. little bit of a, hey, I'm going to definitely beat these guys. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot of entertainment there. Also, too, don't forget, it's so wild right now. I'm looking on this site, and you see Kyle Larson, Aaron McLaren yeah. <laughs> here. That's uh, that, that's really nice, yeah. Um, So, looking through here, yeah, I mean, I've I've learned a good bit about this. Like, Pato Award, obviously, one of the most well-known drivers worldwide. Like, he's really yep. got his country on his back, which is cool. So, Pato, uh, when I first got into IndyCar, I was, like, you know, asking people online. I was like, who should I, who should I pull for? And this is before I knew you. I yes. chose you in the beginning just because you had a mullet at the time, which I thought Thank was you. really cool. Um, but, yeah, a lot of people told me to paddo, like, go paddo. And I was like, all right. So, you know, he, uh, I, I've, got, I've gotten to, to see him a little bit more in action on social media. It seems like he's got some good humor, kind of a funny guy. Had a really funny Valentine's Day post that he put out. Oh, yeah. Um, Alexander Rossi, though, uh, I, I've heard some stuff about him. Um, I know that he's a, he's a good guy, actually, of uh, – I've actually had some some fun cheering for him at a few different races where he did win. So that was cool. Um, the other thing, too, I wanted to note about Aaron McLaren is that there was about a one hour span of time that I thought that the person that sung Chicken Fried owned the team, Zach Brown. <laughs> um, so did want to note that until I learned that that was not correct. Uh, but 
to this day, in the back of my mind, every time I think about Aaron McLaren, I may sing a Zach Brown song uh, in my head. So Zach Brown band, Aaron McLaren, same guy, possibly. I respect um, that. Yeah. I respect that. Well, Zach Brown is going to be paying very close attention. I could see Zach Brown. Uh, I don't know if Zach Brown's going to be in Jeddah this weekend for the Formula One race. Probably going to focus on that, but who knows? Um, so anyway, we know McLaren's going to be good. I, me personally, I really hope Alexander Rossi has a great year. I think he's in a contract year. I, I there, you know, you you don't want to have any uh, rumors starting to circulate early on about how McLaren's trying to replace him. You know what I mean? That's. Uh, I think Alex's main goal is to win races this year. I think you're going to see it. I think Alex Alex Rossi in the aero screen era has been very competitive, but has not won races like he won pre aero screen. The aero screen has really just been a brutal addition to the IndyCar chassis that uh, has not helped a lot of drivers. Um, but it's also helped the young ones who have not got to drive the car without the aero screen. So Adapt moving God, on, baby. yeah, moving on. We will go to. The Andretti Global team, and and I keep calling them Andretti Autosport, which is my fault. Uh, Andretti Global is the operation. Uh, Marcus Erickson, first race with Andretti Global. Uh, Marcus Erickson, obviously winner of this race last year. Uh, he's partnered with Colton Herta. Uh, Colton Herta, very, 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 very talented young driver. Uh, Colton Herta uh, also made a, made a few changes to his life for this year. Uh, Colton Herta was, you know... He, he liked to have a good time. He, he He's a young, uh, athletic human being uh, who is very, very talented. But you know what? He can house a couple beers sometimes, too, after the race. Let's celebrate housing beers. I think that's completely eliminated from Colton's life this year. He is uh, probably not even going to do anything fun ever. It's just focus on winning. And you know what? I actually, I respect that. He's young enough to where if that doesn't work, he can go right back to how he was doing it earlier. But I think he's going to have a great year. I think Colton's going to put... Uh, put all of his experience to use. Uh, you know, being able to celebrate is a lot easier when you win. Uh, and so Colton, I think, is going to have a great year. Marcus is going to have a great year. And Kyle Kirkwood as well. How can you not love this driver lineup? I think it's a great, great lineup. I think Kyle Kirkwood is going to be uh, a a winner yet again. Uh, you know, he, he did hit me last year at this race. That was a shame. But he rebounded hmm. very well, won at Long Beach. So I think it's going to be hard to beat those guys as well. They have focused solely on condensing the operation, right? Not four cars anymore. We're three, a powerhouse of three. Very, very good support system there. Um, I, I think that's going to be a good group. Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely, you know, the Andretti name alone is obviously a name you want to root for in IndyCar. Absolutely. And Colton Hurdle was And in really, an F1, we hope. <laughs> and in F1, yeah, with Cadillac, too. Yeah. Like, gotta have Caddy. <laughs> gotta have the Caddy on there. Uh, we'll see if they get into the club. Hopefully they will, but uh, and I hope they dominate. Uh, but I will say that, you know, Colton Hurdle was the only guy I really knew uh, coming into this year. Um, I had uh, we'd been around him a bit uh, sometimes when we were out in Indy. And, you know, I thought it was really cool. You know, he was kind of a rocker. He likes some punk rock. Yeah. He likes some rock stars in a band. The one thing that I that I feel like more people should talk about is the fact that he resembles Lord Farquaad in real life. Um, he <laughs> is kind that right? of has he does he kind of has the same facial structures of like Lord Farquaad from Shrek. Not saying that he maybe is bad as Lord Farquaad, but I'm just saying that he kind of looks like him. So there All may right. be uh, there may be a I way for it. him to like have some fun. Have some fun with that at some of the races. Like come to a race, got like a feather in the hat. But it sounds like this isn't going to be the year for that. Sounds like Absolutely. this is going to be the Probably year not. for immense focus. Immense focus. Colton Herta fully dialed in, locked in. Now, again, this is not saying that, you know, sometimes you just go into a year and you want to try a bit of a different uh, mental outlook. You want to try a bit of a different uh, program. And and I and I think Colton's doing that. So good for him. Um, yeah, more power to him. Exactly. Moving on to the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team. We're going to get to the two car teams eventually. Uh, the Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan team, three drivers, Pietro Fittipaldi, Graham Ray Hall, Christian Lungard. Um, Pietro, I mean, starting starting off, probably a lot that he wants to prove. Uh, he has been sitting on the sideline of the Formula One uh, World Championship as a reserve driver for the Haas F1 team. Now he is still uh, in that role as well. But uh, 
He's got a couple partners uh, on his car this week in the Oakberry car. I think his car looks incredible. That Oakberry wagon, purple, blue. I think the car looks awesome. Uh, that, that, that partner is also on the Haas F1 team. I believe he originated there. Also, Pietro Fittipaldi, probably one of the smartest business folk of the IndyCar paddock. Him and his brother have done an incredible job on the social media platforms uh, with Kick. They stream on Kick. They do a ton of different stuff uh, content-wise, which I think just makes them a very valuable entity, a very valuable group of brothers. Um, a, a, a Fittipaldi Racing family, of course, is very, very famous, but they are they are killing it. So I'm excited to see how Pietro does. I, I really am. I, I think don't judge him until halfway through the season. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a real challenge. Let, let's give him some time. Young rookie has, has only dabbled in IndyCar, really, so... Um, I, I'd say let, let's, let's reconvene halfway through the year. Yeah. Um, he, Pietro looks like money, dude. I'm, I'm seeing yes. him right here. Like he looks <laughs> like he's ready to roll, dude. Like he clean cut, clean shaven guy. Also uh, NASCAR Wingard. experience grew up, did a lot in Charlotte. You know what I mean? He's an oval guy. He's done exactly. a lot of oval racing in his life. I, I got to meet, uh, one of the family members of the fit of poly family, uh, when we were at the Daytona 500 last year, actually really awesome guy. I talked with him a little bit. So it, um, you know, I, the, the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team, like, you know, obviously everyone knows having, uh, having, having Letterman, a part of that is pretty oh, cool. Yeah. It was a big Letterman guy. Uh, did like to watch me some, uh, some late night television at times. Uh, Absolutely. We, we were talking about Christian Lungard. Um, you know, he, 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 I feel like he's got like the eye of the tiger kind of low key. He might be a dark horse for me this year. I'm just going to put that out there. I agree. I agree. I think Christian is going to be very, very good. I, 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 I think you see Christian on the podium this weekend. Not going to lie. I think Christian Lungard on the podium this weekend in St. Pete. Uh, and again, these are all the drivers that will be showing up to St. Pete. Uh, let's move on to some two car, the two car operations. Uh, let's start with Meyer Shank. Uh, MSR, great group. Uh, really excited for this new lineup. Uh, Felix Rosenquist and Tom Blomquist. Lots of Kvists. Uh, great drivers, I believe. Now Tom struggled a little bit in the in the car at the big and you know he just got thrust in obviously in in the in the time that Simon Pagano was out of the car uh, and physically a big challenge for him so he's worked a lot in the off season about getting himself physically ready we obviously had Michael Shank on on our show it was great to chat with him I think Felix Rosequist is just in all out ball out mode like he's just gonna go into every race weekend not caring about anyone else except he's just gonna win and so. I think Felix is in a great spot. They're obviously partnered with Andretti, so they get a little bit of a data share there. Uh, I think Felix is going to be very, very impressive. I see him. I see Felix maybe not necessarily winning a race in the first six, seven races, but Felix is going to be like sixth at every race. He's going to be in the hunt. He's going to be in the fight. Uh, and I, I do see him, win, him him winning a race before the year is over for sure. Which race do you think he would be best to win? Like what, what's, the, what's the one? What's the prediction there? I think Felix is going to win Road America. I, I, I think Felix is going to win Road America. He's won there before. I think he's going to win Road America again. Okay. All I right. think that's his like move. That. Yeah. I don't I don't have much. I'm going to be learning a lot more about that's all right. Shank this year and Felix and them. All right. Uh, another two-car operation. We'll go with the, uh, the Ed Carpenter Racing Camp. Uh, obviously, Christian Rasmussen in the 20 car this weekend. Renus VK. Uh, oddly enough, he's kind of like a veteran now, even though he seems like a, still a, a young, a young whippersnapper. Um, they got a lot to prove this year. Uh, obviously I know well, uh, a lot about that organization. Um, and it doesn't take, you know, me with my own personal feelings to know that this team has a ton of work to do. Um, and, and Christian Rasmussen, I think he's a very good driver. So I, I, I hope Christian gets in here. And, uh, and does a great job, I hope, for Renus' sake, because I like Renus, um, that they're able to give him a, a good enough car to compete. Uh, but I promise if you see Renus towards the back in qualifying, that's not Renus' fault. So uh, I, I know that Renus is a very good driver. Christian is going to be learning, um, but, uh, but it, you know, we'll see, how, see what happens. They got a lot to prove this year, and uh, you're going to see two, you know, two young guys just getting after it. And I, and I, I, I hope it goes well for them as, uh, you know, as drivers. So we'll see what happens there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Moving through our preview here. Uh, let's go to, uh, you know, some, some new, the, the new drivers at, at Dale Coyne Racing. So we got Jack Harvey and Colin Braun. Uh, Jack Harvey, Colin Braun. Um, we obviously still have the Uncos team to go through, but, but I, I think, and, and AJ Foyt, but 
Very excited for Colin Braun. Colin Braun, I think, physically is going to be in for a big challenge. IndyCar racing is really hard. The cars are super hot. They're physically very challenging. And I think St. Pete as well is one of the most challenging races because it's the first one. It's hot. It's humid. Like you said last year, Chase, you got all your buttons off. No, no mm -hmm. more buttons on the shirt. Uh, that's what I wish I could have done last year during the race. Uh, so hot that it was like I was essentially dying. Um, so that was uh, that was a tough one. But uh, very curious to see what Colin can do. Uh, you know, he's just going to want to get all the laps. Colin's goal, I would say, is to just get as much experience as possible. You shouldn't be holding him to a high standard of like, hey, he's got to finish 10th. It's just it's hard. So anything can be a good thing as long as he gets all the laps in. Jack Harvey is going to want to obviously do a ton, but they've, they've obviously struggled in testing. They've been very, very slow in the tests, but you never know what can happen. So yeah, uh, good to see them uh, get a chance to go after it. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say that the one thing, like I, I talked a little bit about Jack Harvey, obviously knowing him. And then I just also think that it's really fitting that I know that the way it's spelled is different, but it also kind of like low key sounds like it could be, like a uh, like a NASCAR cryptocurrency team, I do. I will want to say that, like you know, there you coin go. racing. Yeah, there you go. Um, moving on to the Yunkos Hollinger Racing Team, uh, very interesting to see how Romain Grosjean, Romain Grosjean, does uh, this year. Uh, he has moved from a powerhouse organization of Andretti Autosport to a team that struggled last year. So, uh, very very curious to see uh, to how he does. Very curious to see how that team operates together. Uh, how does he work with Augustine Canapino, his teammate? Ob obviously, Canapino had a great run with this team last year. Uh, great finish, great season in general. Um, so I think they have a lot to look forward to. But the the Grosjean, Yunkos, uh, Augustine Canapino interaction, I think, is something that everyone is looking forward to see how that progresses, essentially. Very, very interested in seeing how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yep. I don't know. I don't know as much. <laughs> I don't know as much there. That's all right. That's all right. No, we'll just we'll just get into it. Finish it up here with AJ Foyt Racing. Uh, right. You've obviously got uh, Stingray Bob, Stingray Billy Bob, and uh, and, and and Santino Ferrucci. Uh, who knows? They got a partnership with Penske. I think everyone kind of forgot that, but yeah. technically they are partnered with Penske now. Uh, they do have a technical relationship with Penske. So if they're not better, then that's a real strange moment uh I, I as i've always said i think santino as a human being not my favorite human being on the planet uh but i do believe he can drive so if you put him with a penske partnership type vehicle you know i i th there there could be some good things happening there uh stingray rob uh, i mean i don't have anything anything to say i think it's just gonna be uh what uh just kind of doing his thing he's going to be circulating and good for him for being out there um very curious to see how it all goes we have a lot to look forward to so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say i'm gonna say this much about it as somebody just coming into the fold this is an interesting cast of characters over at aj foyt racing indeed right, just take just taking a look at him right here obviously we all know aj foyt legend of the game we love yeah i just love the way that it rolls off the tongue foyt you know what i mean like it's a yep. great name and he's a legend but with Santino and with Stingray Rob, like you've got a guy with one of the most interesting names that I've ever heard, like in racing in general. And then with Santino Ferrucci, I mean, this dude's got like, I don't know, he's got a great like kind of like a it's like a curly mullet, like a permed mullet kind of thing mm. going on in his in his photo right here. Kind of like like I would want to call him the rooster like he was coming like he there was coming go. for him. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, you got the Stingray and the Rooster. Like, that's what I'm calling for the rest of the year. Stingray and the Rooster at AJ Ford go. Racing. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. So, there's your, uh, there's your rundown of everyone who's competing uh, this weekend at the, the, Saint Peter, the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Um, NBC, by the way, it's, it's not hard to find, guys. NBC, very, very simple. 12.30 p.m. Eastern, NBC. Also, Peacock, if you feel like being a streaming guy. Uh, guy or girl, whoever, whoever's watching this race, you can watch it in multiple different fashions. Um, so we're very excited. There's, there's a ton to look forward to. Um, you know, we're going to be judging everything from the first session lap times to who bounced up in P2, who's getting better in practice two, uh, who's going to get the first pole of the season. 
Um, you know, there, there's all kinds of things that, that can take place. Huge accident at the first, you know, first lap last year. I was very, very familiar with it. Um, and a lot of storylines to follow. So I, I can't wait. I, I can't wait for this one. Uh, there was a lot of interesting other IndyCar news as well. You know, this is our official kind of preview show, but, um, you know, Pato has also extended his contract, uh, with McLaren. And, and it was interesting that the financials of that deal kind of came out because it's, uh, a part of the Palo lawsuit. I don't know if anyone remembered, there's still a lawsuit going on there. Uh, Ooh. Pato making a good, a good amount of money. It does not put Pato as the highest paid driver. I still believe that, uh, Colton is the highest paid IndyCar driver. Uh, but Pato looking to make mm, around 5 million bucks a year. Pretty good for IndyCar. Love to see driver salaries going up. That's, uh, you know, Hinch and I had a conversation about this. Uh, tough for us to be uh, really getting into IndyCar when drivers are making no money uh, compared to what they're making now. So <laughs> good for the future of the sport. Um, lots of chatter about new IndyCar pieces as well. There's some new vents that that they're that they're putting on, the, the technical adjustments. Uh, a lot of things to pay attention to, really. Um, but 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 honestly, I talked to Alex Pelot a little bit at the gym the other day. The cars, according to him. Uh, do not really feel a ton different on the street courses uh, or the Sebring, at least, um, compared to the cars that were a little bit heavier. Uh, so I, I think that's a good thing for us as fans. I think it, it, you know it's it's not 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 that big, much of a big difference when it comes to the feel of the car. So I'll be very very curious to see uh, you know who is who is good. Is it going to be the same people that were good at St. Pete last year, or is there going to be any surprises? I, I would love to see some surprises. I really would. I'm a race fan now, right? I'm, I'm not in the car until April for the Indy test. So uh, I'm going to be full race fan mode. Uh, we've seen some testing. We've seen all these announcements. It's finally time to just get going. So I, I can't wait. You know the vibes are good. We have all, we've talked about the vibes of St. Pete. All my friends are going. My entire family's going down there. Everyone's going. I am not going to St. Petersburg. I will not be down mm-hmm. there. Uh, I thankfully get to spend the weekend here in Indianapolis with my girlfriend, uh, which is going to be great. Uh, we got tickets to Bill Burr. We're going to go to the Bill Burr show here uh, oh. this weekend. Very, very excited to see Bill Burr for the first time. This is her Christmas present. I have no reason to go to St. Pete. So uh, no one is paying me to be down there. So all I would do is lose money and get sunburned so, uh, and be depressed. So here the I am. Sunburn's real. The sunburn, <laughs> sunburn part is Sunburn is real. real. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That one is real. So, yes, lots of exciting IndyCar uh, stuff happening right now. Um, and uh, And you know what? I can't wait to dive into it afterwards. It, it, we've we've waited a long time. We've 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 been patient. You know, I wish our season started maybe a hair earlier, um, but uh, but can't wait to get going. Uh, lots of other small indie car news to talk about, but I yeah whatever. Well, let's just get to our interview. All right, let's get to our interview with uh, with Lee Diffie. Lee is a great. He is a great person. Uh, a, a great personality. Uh, you know, for our sport. Um, and, and I think we have, uh, you know, we, we, you have a lot to, you have a lot to listen to in this interview. So let's get to NBC legend, uh, Lee Diffie. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, we are extremely lucky to have a man who has one of the most iconic voices in all of sports broadcasting, uh, a man who, uh, my girlfriend literally loves the way he says my name and kind of imagines that in an odd way, I think, but that's no big deal. Uh, the NBC man, Lee Diffie. Lee, thank you so much for being here. We're very, very excited to have you, honestly. A lot to talk about. A great year coming up. A uh, lot to talk about. Thanks for having me. Let's get to it. Yeah, so Lee, I, very, very exciting season ahead. There's a lot of stories to pay attention to, and we, I mean, you could talk for hours about it. Um, but overall, I think the series has a lot of hype. There's a lot of interesting small technical tidbits that, you know, starting off the year, the cars are a little bit lighter. And then we have the hybrid introduction, uh, later on in the season, uh, you know, lots of cars at the Indy 500. What do you think is your most, uh, the, the moment that you're looking forward to most or the story that you're looking forward to most, uh, you know, at the beginning of the season here? I think, um, as you well uh, know all too well is that you kind of segment the season, right? Like it's the start of the season up to the Indy 500, the Indy 500 itself, and then you you get on with the rest and, and focus yeah. on the championship. I think there's going to be 
you know, to your point, that extra element thrown in this year with the hybrid and the transition to hybrid. So what do we see the teams do? Do they, you know, do they approach this initial segment any different leading up to the 500? And how do they compartmentalize the year? And where, how do they gauge themselves? Do they go about it as usual? Um, the, the, the teams and drivers that have, that have been exposed to the hybrid unit, they seem to like it. They say it's pretty simplistic and easy to use and user friendly. So I don't know. That's what intrigues me is, is the unknown, right? Is, is how do they, how do they, um, what kind of a cadence do they attack the season with knowing that there's going to be a pretty significant change on the other side of the Indianapolis 500? Yeah, big changes for sure. And we've got Ganassi, the powerhouse team, right? They're expanding. They're they're a bigger organization. Do you think they still will have the power? Are they going to be the team to beat, do you think? Or does McLaren, the, the team that realistically, I believe, is probably spending the most money and, and has the most resources considering they're literally partnered with a Formula One team, uh, do you see that fight tightening up a little bit? Does Pato win a race again? Does he Does he become... You know the the championship leader for uh, you know for McLaren. I think Connor, that's the bigger story. That's the bigger story than what does Ganassi do? Because you know, other than just an abject failure, we wouldn't be surprised anything that Ganassi does because of the decades of history and success. So I would put them off to one side, even though they have the the, the defending champion and Alex Pelot. I'd put them off to one side, and I would put the focal point on Arrow McLaren. That's that's the story. Um, for Pato Award to be just that ever-present contender and for him not to win a race last year with the brutal amount of speed that he had. Wild, by the way. That, that's still wild to think about. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And, and you know, he was um, – he, he's mentioned before about his goal of consistency and continuity and things like that. And then, and then you have to throw in that, that, that wild aggression and that spectacular driving style – He's got the taste of victory. He knows how to get there. He's done it multiple times. But what's going to be that passage back? And then your good mate and and no longer McLaren new guy Alexander Rossi. You know Alexander. Um, we give him that. We give him that first year with a new team, I guess. Uh, but for him, this year's got to be significantly uh, better because you know he was almost a champion at his years with Andretti. Of course, won the Indianapolis 500. But to go with the engineering uh, power. And as you said, the, the, the funding that McLaren has and all of its support, both sides of the Atlantic, I think Alexander has to have a much improved season this year. So that's where I'd be looking as opposed to Ganassi. I think, I think the, the spotlight and the pressure um, is on McLaren. And you know, I don't mean pressure in a bad way, but I think the expectation, the air of expectation is on them. I would agree. Now, Chase, I'll let you jump in here if you got something. Yeah, we were talking about surprises with Ganassi. The the biggest surprise I think we would see this year. I'm I'm really just wanting to see Chip do some donuts on us on the one of the scooters. That's really <laughs> something that that I'm looking forward to. But yeah, no, I, I, it's great to talk with you, uh, Lee. By the way, and you know, I uh, I've I've been to one Indy 500 so far, looking to go to a lot more. But I know your voice. Your voice stands out amongst everyone pretty much in broadcasting, especially when it comes to motorsports. You know, I really just kind of wanted to talk about you and, and, and your career here. You started out, um, and I think you were covering the Olympics at some point. What is what is the biggest differences covering men on feet to men in cars? <laughs> ah, well, I've got I was also going to get into the Olympics too <laughs> later. I'm very excited about that too. I've got a uh, I've got a, a less exciting answer or a more exciting answer. The, the, the less exciting answer, Chase, is that a race is a race is a race, right? You have the same components yes. of a race, and I've called all kinds of racing uh, in my career. Um, but I tell you, uh, the the level of excitement when you're calling an Olympic 100 meter final or when you're calling the Indianapolis 500, they're both incredibly exhilarating. What about the guy who's on this podcast with us, Mr. Daly? You know, yeah. there's nothing more exhilarating, and 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 I will, won't ever forget this of when of when what did you lead that year? Forty laps, but when you took the lead, I think half of the state of Indiana was on its feet. You know, there's so Ooh, yeah. it, it's that it's Thank that you. it's the human emotion element. Chase is 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 what really gets it going, and people always ask me, "Oh, you sound so excited," or you do. It's genuine excitement because. Because it's a thrill. I mean, you think about Olympians, they work in, in four-year cycles. 
and and you might you might lose your qualifying race by a tenth of a second. You don't get to go to the Olympics, or you do get to go and you maybe false start the final and you're out. Like it's the the, that human emotion element, whether it's the Indy 500 or the Olympics, it's just, it's magnificent. So I feel very fortunate. I feel very spoiled to be able to do what I do to, to, the, to the level, you know, to say that I've called the Indy 500 and the Olympics and going to be in Paris this year doing it again. So um, uh, it's a big racing season ahead and I'm super excited about it. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the human emotion side. You, you can always tell, I feel like, if you, if you pay attention to sport, if you pay attention to uh, just... The, the world in general, there are a few moments that you can mostly pick out in sports that like, for some reason, everyone just kind of feels the same way. Like it just lights up a little bit of a fire in your heart. And, and, and I think when you as a broadcaster realize that now I've done very little broadcasting, but I try doing the SRX stuff. There are some moments that that was more fun and everyone's a winner there essentially. But like there are moments where you're like, you just react and your reaction is the same that probably so many people at home are, are having as well, but you have to obviously keep a little bit of, you know, your, you can't just shout and scream. You have to be exhilarated, but also, you know, deliver what, what's actually going on. And I, and I think you do a great job of that. Is it working with Townsend and Hinch as well? Has that, has that been a great combination of, of two drivers and experienced folks that, you know, are, are good at talking as well? What what I love, Connor, is is the is the blend of personalities um, that I get to work with. And so, for instance, there was just a few weeks ago, in three consecutive weekends, I was doing three totally different um, uh, sports and three different commentary teams. So I went from super <laughs> I went from Supercross with Ricky Carmichael to great the, guy by the way, yeah, to the Rolex like Twenty Four. Yeah. to the following week doing the Olympic marathon trials. So three different weeks, three totally different things, three totally different commentary teams. And so it's the, it's it's like a race team, right? It's how those personalities blend and it's incumbent upon me uh, to 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 kind of like be the ringmaster to bring all of that together. And, and I always say that if you get on off air, you get on so well on air. And I just happen to be really lucky that all the teams that I work in we're great mates. We're great friends, guys and girls off the air. And we're, we're, we are professional and a really good cohesive unit on air. And I think, you know, Hinch um, in, the, in the larger scheme of things is still relatively new to our, our team just a couple of seasons in coming in after Paul Tracy finished his tenure with us. And James, you know, he's a, he's a very, very dear friend of yours, as I know. Mm. And I'm sure you have observed him just flourish, you know, and... and um, just grow doing the Formula One stuff uh, in parallel with his IndyCar commitments, I think has helped as well. The more it's like driving, more experience. More yeah. experience. It's like driving. The more laps you do, the more reps you get, you're more, you know, the more comfortable you are. And, and I think it's, um, we, we have a really nice team and we have a lot of fun. We, we laugh a lot off air. We laugh a lot on air. So it's great. Absolutely. Now, a lot of great folks at NBC for sure, right? Like they, they love IndyCar. They support IndyCar. I, I think, with how big our fields are right now in IndyCar, right? I think as as I watched a couple races, sadly involuntarily last year, <laughs> I, I look I look at some of the things and do you think that this year that there's maybe more of a like let's say the leaders just leading? Do you hope that there's a little bit more of the focus on you know P12 through P20 even because there there could be all kinds of I think the best part about IndyCar racing is that no matter where you look, I think there's a battle going on somewhere. Yeah. And sometimes I think that gets a little lost on the broadcast because, again, everyone wants to focus on the winner or the leader. Like We get that, but that battle can become stagnant. But I think that with with how big of a field we have, do you think there's any there's any kind of direction from NBC on like, hey, you know what? If the leader's maybe just doing his thing and we've got – some pretty good drivers, especially a lot of young rookies from, you know, you go even all the way back to P20 because there's a lot of times where P20 could eventually win the race. We've seen it many times before. We've seen it in crazy different situations. You think there'll be, uh, we'll, we'll be able to see a little bit more of that this year. I, I'm hoping for that as a, as a, as a spectator of for yeah, this year. Of yeah. Course. Look, it's, it's always the, it's the ongoing challenge, isn't it? To, yeah. to, to what we call in the industry, moving the coverage around. And, uh, you know, just finishing the Rolex 24 a few weeks ago, there were 59 cars 
And yeah. it, it was a goal there that, you know, to try and, and as, as I sit here, I don't know if we achieved it or not, but we certainly went in saying we need to be, we need to be able to come off air and leave Daytona saying we showed every single car of the 59 at least once. You I know, think you guys um, did a good job. Yeah, so that, you know, I, I we, do. Yeah, we try, like, we try. And, you know, do we always succeed? No, we don't. But yeah. it's that, I, I hear you loud and clear, mate. And, and, and you know, we, we talk about that too. And it's just that challenge of trying to move it around and trying to, trying to cover everybody. And, and as you now know from the broadcast booth and from, in, from inside, things move fast. The world, oh, yeah. move, the world moves fast. I remember once at, at Mid-Ohio, Ryan Briscoe wasn't driving and, and he came into the broadcast booth to fill in, I think, for Wally Dallin back years ago, or whatever. And, and uh, he's like, and you know, he's married to Nicole who works in television. Yeah. And, uh, Sports Center. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, boy, things happen pretty fast, don't they? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Chase, go ahead if you got something else. Yeah, no, um, just just more stuff, uh, just kind of looking into your, your past and your career. Um, I, I read something that, that said that there was a point where you were juggling broadcasting and teaching. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. Like many years ago, uh, it, it almost seems Chase in a former life. Uh, and for a very brief period of time, I was a school teacher. I was a PE teacher wow. at, uh, okay. at Ipswich Grammar School uh, <laughs> in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, I, I, I grew up racing motorbikes as a kid. And a lot of my friends uh, went on to become national and world champions. And, um, you know, uh, two of my closest friends went on to be uh, very good in, in, in MotoGP, one and two in the world in MotoGP. So I just happened to be, um, I came from a motorbike family. That's how I got into the sport. And when I stopped and focused on studying, um, I was just hanging around the local motorbike club. My, uh, my older brother was still racing and I knew everybody and Literally, it was it was something as crazy as the local motorcycle club said, "Hey, we need a PA announcer." And I was <laughs> I was twenty years old, and I just I just started and I tried. And then a month later, a lo- another motorcycle club up the road in Toowoomba at Echo Valley, where Will where Will Power, Will, yep. where Will Power <laughs> did his first yeah. dirt track drive, like in an old car that his dad got for him. Oh um, man! And the guy, the promoter. How about this for a small world story? The promoter I worked for. A guy called Glenn Krauss, Will Powers' mum was his accountant. She used to do the books. Like, <laughs> Incredible. Talk about like a, a world yeah. ago, a lifetime ago. And and all this was happening, Chase, uh, while I was at university. And and then I, I, I graduated and I taught for a couple of years. And then, but the, the, um, kind of the profile of the jobs kept growing. I, was, I wasn't on TV or I wasn't on radio. This was just public address. But then I started doing Supercross in Australia, which would be the equivalent of Monster Energy Supercross here, but at the stadiums. And then some opportunities came up and, and things happened really fast. You know, I moved to Sydney, got into television, and I was only in Australia for three years doing that. And I moved to London, worked for the BBC, and I came here to the States uh, in 2002 for IndyCar. A traveling man, that. dude. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lee, let's, we, we did a little bit of the season, but let's talk about more of the Indy 500, right? NBC does an incredible job, tons of coverage. You guys are busy just as much as we are working every single day of practice, uh, qualifying, all, all this stuff, lots going on. Um, what are you most looking forward to about, about this month of May coming up? Because I, me personally, now I'm a little, I'm involved, but there's, a lot of coolness, I think, that we can look forward to. I think as a fan base, IndyCar fans and, and motor racing fans have to be excited, right? We've got McLaren with Kyle Larson. You've got a field that is, again, we're going to have bumping. Um, what, are you, what are you most looking forward to about May? I mean, is it, it again, cars could be fast. Now, they're lighter, yes, but the weight distribution kind of sucks maybe for handling. But, you know, if the weather's right, you know, are we – is it going to be? Is NBC already like, hey, uh, we might be looking at track records here? What What are you What are you most looking forward to about this this upcoming May? We haven't got that far yet about talking about track records, but we <laughs> just we just look forward to, um, like I, I said it on the broadcast a couple of years ago when we came back out of that COVID era, um, when everybody you know from Penske Entertainment and the Speedway. You know, Roger and, and Doug Bowles and everybody did such an amazing job to get the people back. And then when we came back in what would it have been 2022 full on, mm. I remember saying on the broadcast, this is about respecting the ritual, the ritual oh, yeah. that is, you know, Memorial Day weekend. And, and um, 
I, I just get excited about the possibility. You know, what, what, what is that possibility? Is the possibility is it that you win? Is it the possibility <laughs> that Graham Rahal wins? You know, last year in his 12th or 13th attempt, Joseph Newgarden, your old mate, finally yep. won. And just to see that, um, just to see how much it means, you know, and just think, I, even though he's a mate of ours. Is Elio going to get five? Is Elio going to get wow. five? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, even though he's a mate of ours, I've never asked him, but I, I want to ask Scott Dixon, you know, would you trade one of your championships for another one or two 500 wins? I just yep. think that we, it's incumbent upon us, and this is what gets us exciting to answer your question, excited, is, um, is just trying to articulate and show how much it means. You know, what about Pato Award? If he had his time over, would he have attacked Marcus Ericsson more aggressively on that last lap into turn one two years ago? You know, what would Marcus have raced Joseph any different last year? Like what all of those, you know, would have, could have, should have. But to me, that just underscores how big a deal it is and how much it means. And so are we going to get a repeat big story this year or are we going to get another fresh winner? That's what gets me jacked. I like that. No, I, I, I completely agree. There's so much emotion there. There's so much to be excited about. Um, and, and you could talk about it for hours because there, there's, there's a ton of stories, which, which is awesome. And all of those names that you mentioned, they would all be an incredible story. Yeah. Like, yes, Scott Dixon wins all the time, but my gosh, he has only won Indy 500. You know what I mean? And that would be kind of cool in my era. Like he has not won an Indy 500 in the time that I have been involved in IndyCar, which is now like 10 years. So yeah, yeah. that would be crazy to see. And I've literally run at the front with Scott Dixon many times at that race now. So should we, talk, is... should, should we talk about the Kyle Larson? Should we talk about oh, that? Yeah. Because he came, to, he, yeah. came, he, came to, he came to visit us at Supercross, came and saw Ricky Carmichael and myself in the booth. And we had a bit of a chat because it was in, it was the Glendale round. He, I, I didn't realize he and his family live in, in Arizona during the winters. Mm. And, uh, and he had just tested several days earlier at Phoenix. At Phoenix. And yep. the car stepped out on him. And he yep. said, Oh boy. He said, I knew I was alive then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where it really, it. it really got his attention. But I think, um, do you know, Chase and Connor, I can't help but think about our dear old friend, the late Robin Miller. If Robin mm. was still Agreed. alive to see this, and to to know and appreciate and think about how many chili bowls have you done now, mate? Two or three, or <sighs> too, many. Or yeah, too uh, many, two or three, yeah, you two. know, and the and the and the BC thirty nine classic and everything, and yeah. just the dirt track origin and the road to Indy. You know, we when we think about the road to Indy now, we think about you know the junior open wheel formula, but I want I'm talking about Midwest dirt track racing and that road and and the the thing that is right at the core of Kyle Larson's heart is dirt track racing. And, and if he can go and do well at the 500, and I know the bigger picture is about him doing the double, but just to, if he were to do well at the 500, I, I would just say that one's for Robin Miller, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, no, I agree completely. I don't want him to win. I think that would be bad. But I think well, you're he's going <laughs> solid, to solid top 10, I think, for, for Kyle Larson. He can be super happy. And, you know, yeah. I, I even see him, he is for sure, if everything goes correctly, right, it's very hard at one race showing up and doing this. But without a doubt, depending on the speed of McLaren, which if they are not one of the fastest teams, then I would be absolutely blown away. I think he's running in the top five, top eight-ish in that lead pack for sure towards the end of the race. Uh, there's going to be moments, though, that he does not know yet. And that is the difficult part about, you know, being a first timer at the Indy 500, it's so difficult. Now, rookies have won it before. Obviously, we saw young Alexander Rossi do that, but boy, is it a challenge! So, I, I can't wait to see that. Can um, I tell? Can I tell you one thing? Yeah. That the last the last driver to do it, as you well know, was Kurt Busch. And yep. uh, and uh, Kurt's only 500 a, I haven't done in the last like 10 years, which is weird. <laughs> I, I missed out on racing with Kurt. Uh, I don't, Kurt's a I great don't, guy. And, and and we 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 know him well, of course. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've ever asked him this. But one of the things that intrigued me was I said, what was the biggest hurdle you had to overcome thinking that he may have been talking something about the driving or just mm. the surrounds or how it was different? And he said, the biggest thing was the buffeting. Yes. Right? Sitting in the car, in a, in a NASCAR, in a cup car. And, and back then, this was pre-aero screen. Yeah. Well, now. No more buffeting. Yeah. No more buffeting. So that, <laughs> yeah. that, how big an advantage is that? to Kyle or maybe it wasn't going to phase him. I don't know. We will never know. It doesn't matter. It's a moot yep. point, but 
Yeah, no, yeah. That, it is interesting. Times have changed a little bit. It's it's essentially a closed cockpit car, like like not like a NASCAR, but you know you don't have to deal with that in your face. That actually is a lot more difficult than I think people realize. Now, I don't know if this is even legal, but are you allowed to give predictions? Can we get like a Lee Diffie? Oh my give us a give us a championship IndyCar no. championship winner. No, you know and what? Because last a- year, last year I failed horribly. We do this, by the way, secretly. I, oh, I know. With Russ, give Thompson. us a Speed Street special. We won't, I, I like to Rock, ask paper, people. Scissors. I like to ask our guests. Yeah. The, give us the top three at the Indy 500 in no particular order. Just oh, God. we're not picking a winner. We're just giving three drivers that will be in the first three positions. And then I'd like to say because we picked our IndyCar champions last last week, and yeah. I, I've already picked Alex Pillow. No big deal. Yeah. Um, but uh, but let us know. Give us maybe a little Lee special. Why don't I, can I can I kind of like go like this? Just kind of a you can do whatever about. you want. You can, just, you, if you got yeah. a magic crystal ball, feel I'll free. Just, Chase just, had one last I week. I have I have one. I can let you borrow it if you want to. <laughs> I'll just kind of do a roundabout. So I'll, I'll share okay. some thoughts as as opposed to pinpointing. We do do this with our statistician Russ Thompson. He sends around a group email to the TV team and. Sometimes people nail it. I got it. I got it two years ago with Will Power as the as the champ, but I failed dismally last year. Um, <laughs> look, I think, I think, and here, and I'll give you the I'll give you the rationale as to why I think this way. I think for championship, and especially the way that he finished last year uh, as the as the top Penske driver, and the way that he finished when he jumped up to third after the last race, Scott McLaughlin I and knew you McLaughlin were say that. and yeah. McLaughlin. <laughs> McLaughlin very much, um, and this was right from when he first came in, he, 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 I don't want to say compares himself, that's not correct, but he watched what Pelot did in mm. Pelot's first season, then he watched what Pelot did in his second season, and then, you know, Scott's immensely competitive and, and incredibly intelligent and savvy like that. So uh, if, if Scott McLaughlin was not a championship contender come Nashville Speedway, um, that sounds pretty strange saying that, doesn't it? Yeah. Nashville Speedway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. Big fan. <laughs> uh, I would be. I would be really surprised. I'd be really surprised. And then, based on last year, if a Ganassi car isn't isn't uh, winning the Indianapolis 500, I would be surprised. Is that Oof. Scott Dixon? Is that Scott Dixon? Is it? Is it Seven Palou? Time. I mean, Palou. Yeah. Is it Palou? Like Palou should have been. Palou should have been running He's away been with that good, last yeah. year. Yeah, you know, that that. Polo actually told and... me at the gym just uh, a couple of days ago. He said, "I'm actually going to start last this year because I always have to come back from last anyway." I'm like, you know, Alex, go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, it's a mental game. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, well, I like good. the seven time prediction though, yeah. because like, that, that's where I'm at. I'm on. So you're. It's really like a the the New Zealand special. That's what we'll call it. Um, Which you won't pre- ever get me to say that because Aussies and Kiwis yep. have this love hate, you know, relationship. Oh, yeah. so, so that means even more, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I, like I just it. there's so many. You could you could go in so many different directions. What about what about it? Um, you know, Ray Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan have to be better on ovals. They just Ooh. have to be. And uh, it was interesting hearing Graham Ray Hall's comments the other day. Uh, I was at, I was in Indy uh, with the team. And Graham just said maybe his first teammate since Scott Dixon that gave him the biggest kick up the butt is Christian Lungard. Meaning, oh, yeah, yeah. meaning sure. like, hey, I'm here and I'm going to rock your world. I'm going to challenge you. Mm. And Graham, Graham looked fit. He looked strong. He looked focused. He looked upbeat. And, and Christian was sitting right beside him when he was making these statements. And Lungard was kind of looking at him like, oh, that's the first time you've told me that. But, I mean, I think if that, and Connor, you know this all too well, if there's that intra-team rivalry where, where the drivers are really pushing each other to another level, I think that'll be good. So um, I think the sport would be, the sport would welcome a Ray Hall Indy 500 victory just, just for the headline factor, you know? Absolutely. And, and having been in the Ray Hall team, I, I would say Christian was a great teammate. And, and, and Christian and Graham, the way, I, the way I think that whole group worked, was was quite impressive. So yes, Christian was probably surprised, but he's a good teammate. He he was very respectful of, of what I was doing as a, just kind of an outsider. And obviously, I got in there and was quite quick. So that that was hopefully helpful. But um, I, I I do believe that team is going to be extremely strong on the street and road courses. The big questions will be the ovals. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Um. One thing before I I know we've we've taken up some of your time, but no, I love I'm the good. Olympics. Yep. I love the Olympics, and no. and I have to get to that too because. 
my cousin Nikki was competing at the last Olympics. And so I got to see a little bit what was going on. Now, there were still a bit of COVID rules over there, and it was a bit tough. But I'd say the Olympics are fully back, right? Like the Olympics are fully yes. back. We're all excited. Yes. Um, Paris, what, what events are you most excited about? Because again, we love hearing you on the racing calls, right? Like, hey, we're racing. This is going to be awesome. But there's got to be, you know, the 100 meter. I mean, that's sick, right? But there's got to be some some other events that that might be very, very enjoyable for you as well, no? Oh, very much so. And, you know, Connor, I think that doing track and field for the years that I have been has made me a better motor racing commentator. And doing motor racing that. has made me a better track and field commentator. Because a lot of what I get to do in motor racing just directly applies to track and field, particularly the longer um, races. So, you know, the, the 100 and 200 have all that, that pizzazz and, and that, but the longer races say anywhere from, you know, 1500 on like to 3000 meter steeplechase to 5,000, 10,000 and marathon, you really get, you really are able to get into telling a story. It's kind of like, almost like if you think of a golf tournament over four days, that story yeah. unfolds. It's like when you do the 500, you know, what were your first 50 laps compared to your last 50 laps? And you get to mm. tell those stories over the longer distances. I get to sit alongside some incredible people um, at the Olympics. My teammates are Addo Bolden, who's one of the greatest sprinters ever. He's got four Olympic yeah. medals in the 100 and 200. Sonia Richards-Ross, who's a four-time gold medalist and just a, a legend. Pretty um, sweet. Yeah, <laughs> Cara, Cara Goucher, who's finished on the podium in the, in the New York and Boston marathons. She's won a a world championship medal at 10K. Trey Hardy, who's an Olympian and a medalist and, and a two-time world champion uh, in the heptathlon. He, he is awesome. Um, Paul Swangard, Lewis Johnson. It's just an awesome team that we get to work with. So I'm sitting around, I'm sitting in amongst these Olympic legends and I just, I spend a lot of my time uh, just listening. You know, I love just listening yeah. to their stories. Um, they'll occasionally ask me about some motor racing stuff. Or, Good. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. They watch. Good. They watch and they they like it. And some of some of them have we need been that. have been to to some some races. But I I just love. Um, it's kind of difficult for me because you know being being uh, born and raised in Australia, but now an American, a proud American citizen for twelve years. Um, and I'm commentating for America's, you know, yeah. Olympic Network. I kind of, I kind of have two eyes. You know, I'm looking at what Team USA is doing, and then I'm looking at what Australia is doing. And so I kind of have uh, I, my my attention is it's not divided, but it, it's spread. You know, it's spread uh, seeing what everybody's doing. How much studying do you have to do for all the athletes? There must be a ton of athletes that you like. Obviously, th there's a lot of this that I think would come natural to you as a broadcaster. You get it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's a little note. I'm going to have that in my brain. But there's got to be so many athletes for all these different events that you got to be like, I got to have notes on these people because yeah. you always come in with the hot facts. You know what I mean? Like, hey, this yep. is what we got. It's it's a ton. Um, we, yeah. we, we, we read a ton. And um, because there are, the, the volume, the number of athletes uh, is so uh, great that you have to basically, I mean, this is a very raw way of doing it, but you've got to kind of read this much to use this much, you yeah. know, and, and, and then you have to disseminate when am I going to use that note? You know, it's it's no different to what we do for you as if I, I might hold on to something about you right until that moment where you take the lead in the Indy 500 and then roll it go. out. And if you don't <laughs> take the lead in the Indy 500, well, then that, that, that little factoid never gets rolled out. And, but you have Save to, it for next year. <laughs> yeah, you have to read it. You have to write it. You have to, you have to recall it or you have to have it there at the ready. We are super, um, we are super supported. Uh, NBC has a really deep Olympics uh, broadcast, uh, sorry, um, research department. And so we have people uh, who make us sound a lot more intelligent than what we are. Um, they, they work so hard and they give us, uh, they, they, they give us, they arm us with everything we need. But at the end of the day, um, and my two sons always ask me like, dad, why are you still in the office? I'm like, cause I'm bloody, <laughs> I'm bloody reading, you know, yeah. I'm reading and reading and reading. And, um, so you have to go through that. You have to do your prep and your homework. And, and then when you get, if you find something on an athlete, that's really quite intriguing. When you get the opportunity to bring that out and tell the broader audience, a story about that individual, whether it be, um, you know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stories of hardship, Connor. Like, uh, oh yeah, uh, you know, athletes who had really rough upbringings and maybe weren't raised by their parents and you know, came out of foster homes or whatever. And all like all of a sudden, here they are representing the team, Team USA at the Olympics. You know, and and then they might win a medal. And it's just 
it's remarkable what sport has given their lives. That, that's, a, that's a lot of what we, a lot of joy we get out of telling those stories, you know? I love that. Yeah, I, the Olympics are uh, a, a true joy to watch for me every year. I, I, I've, 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 I've found myself fully locked in and obviously racing is on a bit of a break during that time too. So we get to watch a lot of the Olympics. Um, Lee, I appreciate you, man. Uh, this was a great, great chat. Uh, we can't wait to hear you every weekend uh, for IndyCar that you can be there for uh, and then hear you on the Olympics. Um, NBC this weekend in St. Petersburg. Very, very excited about that. Um, we appreciate you. And, uh, you. And, and and we will be tuning in very intently to hear all these fun <laughs> facts that you've prepared. And hopefully let's see some battles between P10 and P15. I, that's all I want to see. I well, want to see some of that mid-pack battle. That's all I want to see this year. Uh, listen, listen, listen. you know that I'm a, f- a friend of your family's and especially your dad, who's a former F1 driver and mm. commentator, as am I, a former F1 commentator, and I love Formula One, but the season opener in Bahrain was flat out boring. So yep. we are going to see... <laughs> wow, we're but, taking shots fired here. But we're going to see action in St. Pete. You're actually going to yeah. see some motor racing in St. Pete. So there you have Woo! it. Thank I God. Hear it. Motor racing time. I love that. That was a great little shot. Lee, thank you so much. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed that, honestly. I, I, I love chatting with Lee. Uh, can't wait for the Olympics. Can't wait for NBC coverage this weekend all throughout the year. Uh, great guy, huh, Chase? I mean, I, I, I enjoy I, he's, His voice is very encapsulating. Dude, he's a, a, he could be called the songbird of his generation when it comes <laughs> there you to go. motorsports coverage. So The I motorsport mean, songbird. Motorsport that's songbird. That's it, Great voice on the guy, dude. Great voice. Yeah. So that was a, a great chat. I hope everyone enjoyed that one. Uh, before we get to the Ricky Treadway Random Indy 500 Driver of the Week, uh, there was one thing that I do hope everyone is excited for. I, I, I'm very excited for it. But uh, the Dan Weldon documentary uh, on, on, on Max, uh, H, formerly HBO Max, but uh, that'll be coming out March 12th. Uh, so please give that a watch. We, we obviously love and support everything the Weldon family does. Uh, Dan and, and Susie's two kids are uh, you know, the, the, the next generation of superstars, I, I hope with everything in my body, uh, you know, in our sport. So, uh, so make, make sure to give that a, a viewing. Uh, I plan on watching it. I will probably cry the entire time, uh, but uh, going to be excited to check that one out. Uh, so be sure to keep your eyes on, uh, on the Max, on the Max app uh, for that. So, all right. Let's uh, finish up the show with our uh, Ricky Treadway Random Indy 500 Driver of the Week. Time now to meet the drivers. So we'll make up the field. All right, this week we went to 1966. 1966. Uh, the 1966, now this is a fun fact, ladies and gentlemen. The 1966 Indy 500 was won by car number 24. And what car number am I for the Indianapolis 500 this year? Car number 24. So very, very excited. Graham Hill won the Indy 500 in 1966. Car number 24. This is good sign, good vibes, all kinds of great things. But that is not our random Indy 500 driver week. That is not it. That's not our guy. Our guy is P31, probably tough day, accident, it says. He got an accident. Uh, Bobby Grimm. So Bobby Grimm is our random Indy 500 driver of the week this week. Bobby Grimm, born in Coal City, Indiana. An Indiana man. Uh, poor Grimm died of cancer in Indianapolis, uh, but he's still an Indiana man. RIP Indiana man. Uh, drove in the USAC series, uh, 1958 to 1969, with 66 starts, including the Indianapolis 500 races. Each year from 1959 to 1968, except for 1965. Uh, Finished in the top 10 30 times. Uh, That's not at the Indy 500, but uh, very, very cool. Won the 1959 Indy Rookie of the Year. Oh, all right. Despite finishing 26. Well, that's interesting. That's like a Fernando Alonso type situation. Uh, Very, very cool to learn about uh, Bobby Grimm here. So lots of Indy 500s. Um, Fascinating to see, though. Not a ton of great finishes. Uh, top 10, two top 10s, it looks like. Uh, a couple oil leaks, some crashes he's been into. 
Uh, so tough, tough run uh, for Bobby Grimm, but two top tens. So uh, two top tens for uh, Bobby Grimm in the Indianapolis 500. And uh, Chase, I-, I don't know what you know about Bobby Grimm, but uh, I'm sure we can count on you for some uh, not factual information, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, so this week was a little bit different. You know, when you said Bobby <laughs> Grimm, you know, I, I, my grandpa usually will tell me about things. You know, my uncle's uh, third cousin will tell me some things that have happened in the past. I didn't really oh. have much on Bobby. So this week I had to turn to artificial intelligence to learn a little bit about Bobby Grimm. So okay. here we go. I have a fact here to read. This is, uh, this is from a, from a may, maybe, maybe not legitimate source. Uh, Bobby Grimm once entered a lookalike contest where the participants were to dress as their favorite mythical creature. Bobby <laughs> chose a dragon for his costume, complete with smoke effects for breath. However, the smoke machine malfunctioned, filling the stage with so much fog that no one could see the contestants. When the smoke cleared, Bobby, still in full dragon mode, was mistakenly awarded for the prize dragon for mode. best <laughs> invisible man impression. He accepted the award with a roar, proving that sometimes the dragon chooses you. That that's an a, that's what AI said about Bobby Graham. Wow, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, AI did impress me there. That was a great story. I, I feel like I learned something about fictitious Bobby Graham. Love that. Yeah. Well, there you have it, Bobby Graham, <laughs> Indy 500 legend, two time top ten finisher. Uh, Bobby Graham, Indiana man, Coal City, Indiana. I did not know Coal City, Indiana was a city, so now I know. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening this week. Uh, Again, please share the show. If you have a friend that you feel like that needs to listen to our show, please share it with them. Please leave us a rating and review on the the Apple podcast program. That helps us a lot. Uh, Just go to the YouTube channel if you feel like it, Connor Daily 22. Maybe do a little subscription there. Maybe like the video. Maybe leave a comment on there. However you want to do it, feel free to share the show. Feel free to support the show if you enjoy it. If not, well, I'm sorry. But... I can't wait to talk next week with the winner of the St. Petersburg Grand Prix, uh, the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, obviously an IndyCar staple, a fantastic event. Uh, NBC, 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. Very, very excited for it. Uh, And with that, we will see you guys next week on Speed Street. Hasta luego. Hey everyone, Connor Daly here. Please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And also subscribe to the channel as well. That would be very helpful. Be a friend, tell a friend. Thank you so much for the support. And we'll see you on the next episode of Speed Street.